we made it to the end of the year. <laughs> Live <laughs> from All right. it's almost 2024 studios. It's the Friday show. Woo! Wow. Featuring Ari the Data Queen, Analyst Hole, Matt Muscardi, Jesse the Money Whisperer, and me, Hazelnut Rollis. Yeah. Woo-hoo! Yeah. On today's weekly wrap up, something even better our yearly wrap up. Ooh. <laughs> Wait, we skipped this week entirely. Yeah. Tw- I realized that like just now. It's fine. 20, 2023 in review today. I don't know why we're doing it today because no one wants to work next Friday. Is that why? Yes. Yeah, no one's going to No be one here. will be no working, working, working. I might be Friday. working. I have a holiday Christmas Matt theater said show he was to put working out. working all week. Minus Friday. Yeah. It's understood. I'm working all week. So we're going to do it a little bit differently today. Here's how it's going to work. We're going to, we're going to, for all those loyal fans who stick with us every week. Is that, do you think that person exists? Do we have that yes. loyal fans? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, they used to be in Finland, but now no more. So this is an overly complicated show. I took every winning headline from all of our categories and sent it around to the company and asked them to pick five, company. five headlines, company, right? Us? <laughs> I I literally asked them to select five stories and they No ca- you no you did not. I did. And they came back each came back with about 40 stories. So, here's how it's going to work. Wait, excuse me. Here's how it's going to work. You did. I am going to uh I'm going to go last. I'm going to do story of the year based on what we vote in all the other categories and I'm also going to try to fill in some of the gaps of the stories I think they might have missed. So, we'll wrap up that way and we'll start with something highly unusual, we're going to start with Jesse, the Money Whisperer, with the exhausting story of the year. I don't know why you guys chose that. Starting well, because Jesse, because unfortunately your story usually works really well, your category. By the time we get to you, I'm really ready to wring your neck, so. <laughs> yeah, I, and you guys have already covered most of I know. Stuff, Look, so. I, this, there's going to be a lot of redundancy fun. in today's show. I can already tell. So try to, I don't know, try to get to the point. Jesse, what do you have? Exhausting is of the year. The most exhausting well, yeah. story. Here's the bad news. Yeah. Um, before we get started, because Damien pressed all the buttons, now none of my, n- none of the live audio yeah, no works. Music. So well, how'd you um, get the Rocky I'm going theme going? To, I'm gonna have to play something else entire. Well, n- no, you you screwed up something with all the buttons. So <laughs> now there's no music. Oh. So Rocky worked and nothing else. Play Rocky again. And so that then. means we're basically just gonna listen to Rocky and we, there we have go. <laughs> no perfect. other. Oh. No Perfect. other sound effects. Come on, Jesse. What do you got? Show. Jesse, get pumped. <laughs> okay. Most exhausting of the year. You guys year. ready? Yes, excited. What happened? When do I, When does this music It end? just never stops. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, go for it. All right. Up first, we got my category. I thought we were doing categories. It's all right. Here, However okay? you want to interpret it. So here's my first category. Moms get fed last. Ooh, we know this. Okay. Here are some of the headlines. More moms are leaving the workforce, but not because they want to. Ah. Working women spend $15.4 billion more than men in oh. out-of-pocket health costs. Ugh. And September, this isn't like a workforce one, but September 5th was equal housework day. It's time for women to quit housework again. Oh September 5th. September 5th. Well, what are they going to do? Because we're Strive Asset Management all year has been voting women out of the boardroom. Um, we only put women in seats of power after the men screw up something. Right. So um, there's a lot of glass cliffs. So w- if they don't do the housework, they're going to rest. What are they going to They're just going to rest. <laughs> they're going to rest. This is actually, Jesse is very tired today. She just wants to take a nap. We're just rushing through this. <laughs> just thinking about that. So your first, so, uh, so you're, you're trying to say that you did this in categories, Jesse. So your first moms one is moms your, get fed being last. A mom, yeah. Being a mom ruins your career is basically okay. one of the I exhaustingest like themes wow. like of it. this what else? What's your other exhausting thing? Actually, Ari's entire career has gone down the drain since oh. she had Miles Satterall. No, that's like, not true. Not true at all. Okay. This one, mm-hmm. no surprise. Profits over our planet that's literally on fire. Okay. Give us some examples. BP, Shell, Exxon. This this kicked off the year. Yep. BP, Shell, and Exxon suddenly backing off their climate promises. Mm-hmm. That has happened consistently throughout the year. Yeah, it was part Mammoth of... It seemed like it was part of the anti-woke, anti-ESG messaging, right? It allowed a lot of corporations yes. to just completely back off all of their promises. It's a great way to start. Yeah. Yes. 
fast fashion's curious comeback. We have this whole fast fashion mess, which includes fast fashion has spawned a mountain of leftover clothes in the Chilean desert Ooh, that's I so massive that. it can be seen from space. That might yeah. be, I mean, I, oh. literally might be Ooh. my favorite headline of the year. I mean, that, that headline yeah. tells every story you need to know. Yep. Excessive online shopping is killing our whales. And 63 cruise ships owned by Carnival Corporation released more toxic sulfur gases than all the cars in Europe. Oh, jeez. Oh. That, that's a bad one. Okay, so number two. Just, just so we can yeah. float around, also, see some places, party. I, I'm pretty sure I this Get wasn't a study, but those same 63 cruise ships um, were responsible for more norovirus than every yeah, car in definitely. Europe. Jesse, that's just well, one Carnival, of them. Carnival... Yeah, that's just Carnival would argue there aren't that many cars in Europe. <laughs> that's not just true. Really? Not really? true. That's <laughs> the argument. There's tons of cars in, in Europe. They're just cars. very small, Ari. So Jesse, <laughs> you, so moms get fed last. Profits over planet. What else do you have? That's good, Jesse. We have workplace discrimination, which oh, is not okay. new. No, it's Very not new. exhausting. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, what do you got we here? We have an airline, an airline was fined because it had rules about high heels and makeup uh, for female cabin yeah. crew. Hey, 1950 oh. called. We have the Wisconsin dairy industry was kind of exposed because they rely on undocumented immigrants, but they don't let them drive. Uh -oh. So they can't wow. get groceries. <laughs> wow. they, can't, they can't. Yeah, they're Jesus. expected to work and yeah. dedicate their lives but they can't actually do anything for themselves. Women could fill truck driver jobs. Companies won't let them. They that was oh, yeah. Why was that again? Drive. Why? That again. Yeah. Jesse, do you remember <laughs> why they wouldn't let them? Because they weren't safe? Because, because they weren't safe. Yeah. They yes. could not ensure that they wouldn't safety. be harassed that, that's gotta by be, the people they hired. That story that says is. it all, yeah. Wow. And then, and then we also have one. it infiltrating. I mean, sports. We've known this, but we had women's soccer players promised thirty thousand to play in the World Cup. FIFA backed out. Mm -hmm. Men, college sports. Men make twice as much money as women under NCAA's new rules that allow college basketball players to cash in. Right. And then we got the opera, <laughs> the yeah. opera. gender imbalance oh, yeah. at the opera. Yeah. Oh, I remember Beyond podium, not, not caring about this. Not one. just composers. So, anyways, we've got a whole bunch okay. of so, workplace discrimination. Moms get fed last. Profits over planet. Workplace discrimination. This is great, exhausting stuff, and Jesse. We're not what done else? Tired we yet. still have uh, two more categories. Well, so what exhausted. else? Exhausted. He's like, <laughs> go faster. You said five. <laughs> yeah. CEO misconduct. Well, uh, can I just say? I mean, ooh. Jesse, can I just say? I just. I just checked the record. I said, let's go with top five for each category, meaning top five headlines so you didn't for exhaust. Okay, go ahead. Okay. But I referenced go last ahead. year's show <laughs> sure. being new. I referenced last matter. year's show. It doesn't and matter. We did this is your category. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I ignored CEO everything misconduct, said too, too. Which surprisingly, right. in my head, I thought there was more here, but here are a couple. There's a. Uh, CS Disco CEO Kiwi Camara gives up a 110 million pay package after groping female employee, shoving oh, yeah. meat in her face. Oh, okay. Ooh. And then the crypto CEO of Giving Tree, Sam Joel, steps down after misogynist well, rant. We covered that. That I was wanna, on LinkedIn. I want to remind the listeners that the spreadsheet I sent around was only the stories that won the category during the year. It wasn't it wasn't all the stories that, okay. that didn't win. So there Jesse, there are plenty of other CEO misconduct stories. These are just the winners. Yeah, I know there were a lot. There I did lot. leaf through, but a lot of them were like l pending lawsuit or expected to pay, and mm -hmm. I'm like that doesn't rile me up quite as much. Okay. I mean, we like a uh, non-winner was didn't BP's CEO Bernard Looney yes. step down yes. for because he lied to the board about like what he actually did at the workplace. It wasn't even necessarily that it was misconduct, but he was like there's something shady. Yeah. Liar. Yeah, big liar. Big there was a lot of lying going on this year. What else, Jesse? All right. Lastly, this felt very this year esque, so I had to add it. AI oopsies. AI oopsies. Yeah. <laughs> Levi says it's AI generated diverse models that cause huge backlash are not a substitute for action on diversity. Remember that one, but yeah. they were. Mm -hmm. Um I try I try to cite where AI matched me with someone based on my hotness rating. It's really messed up. <laughs> I don't uh, wait, really get that. Or is that you <laughs> talking? I don't, <laughs> I don't understand what you just I said. I wasn't able I was rated so low I wasn't able to try dating anyone. Oh, so this that's is how you found 3, your husband. Okay, I now understand. Yeah. <laughs> hot chat. I 3, really 000. thought you had written that. <laughs> yeah, that does seem like a headline. That no, you that's a written. that's a very business insider headline, let's be fair. It is. Yeah. It's, it's business insider. And then 
then Gen Z dating app Snack lets you lets your AI trained avatar go on dates so you don't oh, have to. Right. Oh, I remember no. loving oh this one. Oh no, forget and it. Then, I and then that we've got one. a really vague open ended one. Snapchat's AI could be the creepiest chatbot yet. Okay, so, so these means. are just like chatbots gone wrong or using AI because it's the craze and not really doing it correctly. To They're quick, faux pas. To quickly wrap up Jesse's uh, most exhaustingest of the year, she grouped him into five categories. Moms get fed last, profits over planet, workplace discrimination, CEO misconduct, and AI oopsies, which I don't really understand. <laughs> so I will ask all of our extremely fabulous pundits here. What do you think is the most exhaustingest category of the year? I just love a couple of these headlines. Go ahead, Ari. What do you love the most? I well, first of all, that there's still high heels and makeup <sighs> rules for airlines. Well, what? we just this, year, this week yeah. we wow. covered Matt. This week at BP, BP designed new uniforms, and they were they, British Air BA. I'm sorry, British Air. They were see-through. They were too see-through. <gasps> and so they told women that they could only wear a certain type of underwear. because they were. So instead of actually making um. new uniforms that weren't see-through, they tried to restrict the, the what women could wear as underwear. And, of course, the, the unions mm. fought back and said, you cannot tell our workers what underwear to wear. So, BP, so British Airways, I'm sorry, they, they decided to go against that. But th this is still going on. That's I mean... Especially Moronic. in the airline industry, I have no idea why they're so interested in what the women wear there. On the flip side, though, mm -hmm. didn't FedEx this year remove some of their oh like, the uh, hair and they, tattoos? Yeah, tattoos. Yeah. I think that tattoos was last year, and, maybe, and but, mohawks. Yeah, uh -huh. But but like it basically this highly correlates with who you know, is looking for workers and is t How totally badly desperate. Do you need like them? they like we're willing to have discriminatory policies about what you wear when you you're not desperate enough for workers and as soon as it's like oh shit we have no one to drive our FedEx truck then you're out there being Come like here. you know what wear pants some days whatever bring your tattoos over here is this face tattoos whatever all right is that your vote workplace discrimination yeah, but mostly because of the truck drivers. They desperately need to fill some of those jobs, and then they're like, but never mind, we don't want to get sued yeah, because I, we hire and train crappy people. I remember we spent a lot of time on that story. It's probably one of the most shocking stories of the year. But they couldn't fill these roles because they could not ensure the physical safety of the women driving they these don't trucks. Wanna, they don't want to address they the, don't, the systemic problem. Incredible. <laughs> really, that's an incredible story. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so Matt, you want to weigh in here? <laughs> Yeah, I'm going with profits over planet, actually, um, uh, for the simple reason that as soon as, first of all, it was, it's going to be the absolute hottest year on record. Mm -hmm. We had wildfires that ate most of Canada. We've had droughts. We've had floods. We've had the worst weather conditions in our history and the highest temperatures in the history of the planet. And as soon as it was expedient, they every fossil fuel company announced their largest record profits ever share buybacks oh and ps those climate promises were really kind of like climate suggestions that we might have done but now we're not going to do and that's just and the heels of cop where now everybody's celebrating somehow we're celebrating <laughs> What are we celebrating? We're celebrating. We're celebrating the ninety thousand people who flew there. Yeah, nine, <laughs> like and 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 like what they came out with was not a phase out of fossil fuels. We just joked that it was like a nudge, a, a gentle shuffle towards twenty fifty, in which we might limit. Some, I don't know. This one is exhausting to me. Uh, okay, so I can either create a tie for Jesse or break the tie. Um, which will you choose? Ooh. Yeah, I gotta, Ooh. I gotta. I, I, unfortunately, Jesse, I'm not gonna let you weigh in on your own category. I have got to agree with Matt on this one and go profits oh. over plan yes, because that is correct. Because let me let me add That's two. Correct. Let me add two headlines that you missed uh, that further this story, and that is one that we covered just recently: greedflation, corporate profiteering, significantly boosted global prices, and. The 100 largest low-wage employers have spent $341 billion on stock buybacks since 2020. So uh, those... And look, yeah. if I'm honest here, 
um, putting Carnival Corporation in a category is always going to get my vote. I, hate, <laughs> yeah. I don't understand why they exist. And Jesse, uh, I'm sure you're happy with that choice. Profits over planet. The most exhausting story of the these year. These were actually the two that I felt. I mean, workplace discrimination and profit. Yeah. But just so we're clear, Ari did lose. <laughs> Ari lost. Yeah. Ari was incorrect. <laughs> Moving on. Speaking of losers. Come on. Yeah. Speaking of losers, the great analyst hall, Matt Muscardi in... <laughs> I mean, oh, this this is gonna kill me. I know. I almost didn't yeah. want him to do Matt this category this followed year. Followed directions, though. I think. I didn't do five, though. So uh, followed. Matt, you're in here with ass holiest of the year. Always, uh, a f- really the most featured, celebrated category of the week. So <laughs> celebrated you, you have, by no one. You have a lot I, to cover here. I mean, th- you. He's gonna really rile. We us could up. do 400 shows based on the assholes of the year. So I don't know how you're gonna do this one. <laughs> We could One do for assholes each of day. the day, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. 365 assholes. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, next year, in twenty, you know, 25 days of holidays. <laughs> we have we a holiday have calendar. <laughs> An advent calendar of, of assholes. assholes. Ooh, I like that. Um, uh, all right, so assholes to the year. First, I want to start off with some stats. Because Everybody loves stats. Um, I made a spreadsheet. Damien pulled every headline that won, and he had to do some work on mine because... I tend to choose like meta assholes, not like just <laughs> yeah. a person. It's like categories of assholes. Um, there were 41 weeks to choose from. Three or four were removed because um, I didn't have any specific asshole. In fact, one week the asshole was everything. That was actually <laughs> I like that one the most. Spreadsheet. <laughs> everything. Yeah. Um, and two were removed for vacation purposes. Yeah, because I, we I were was, mad that you, you went to the beach in Hawaii and we were upset. Yeah, I was in Hawaii <laughs> yeah. visiting my in laws. Or. Is- Mark Zuckerberg. Um, yeah. I categorized every like uh, like Jesse did. I categorized my assholes, but I did it in the spreadsheet and I I counted them. The number one, the top category for the year, eleven out of the forty one weeks was hating women, gays, and Jews. Oh. That was the top category of Ooh. assholes. That's it was terrible. somebody like, yeah. who was doing something around that. The top pr- protagonist of the year was the idiot GOP. Oh. So you talk about the um, anti woke, anti ESU wars. The whole Republican war against ESG Mm -hmm. and sort of the outliers around that. The second protagonist of the year was actually idiot investors. Mostly I spent a lot of time angry at investors for doing something stupid. Adam Newman lovers. Between the Adam Newman lovers and the and the lovers. ISS, like uh, saying that yeah, JB Straubel on the Tesla board, mm-hmm. who's Musk's old friend, is fine, but Robin Denholm is not fine. Right. Like the inconsistencies with that. The obvious individual that stood out was Musk himself. Of course, of and, course. And the theme of the year was money wins versus everything. So okay, so that kind of goes with Jesse's similar, uh, exhausting yeah. of Very the year similar. profits over planet. Yep. Here are your options, okay. and I, there's only four. I didn't do five because I don't care that about Damien's instructions. Um, number one, Mark Andreessen and the Techno Optimists. Oh. Okay, that Tell, sounds like remind a us coming to Broadway in 2024. <laughs> yeah, remind us about his uh, glorious uh, proclamation earlier. Is it this is this fall? Right, this fall. That this fall, Mark Andreessen wrote the Techno Optimist Manifesto, mm-hmm. in which he laid out the lists of enemies of you know basically p- progress, and of course the enemies were um, included ethics, and um, that was actually he listed as one of the enemies. He's and, still threatened um, by ethics and corporate responsibility, sustainability, ESG. He named all those things as enemies, um, and uh, he, this is the same person whose optimistic outlook on the world included the largest ever investment his fund has ever made in Adam Newman, um, the fail up uh, WeWork Mm -hmm. ex-founder. But I pulled for this, this is new, I pulled some of his optimistic investments this year. Okay. They include, this is just this year, uh, uh, Andreessen Horowitz invested in Castilian, Castlion, something like that. Which is an unmanned defense drone company. Ooh. And by defense, um, they mean drones that can shoot at things? Yeah, you know, something that hovers above you and blows yeah, you up. Yeah, it's not an actual shield. It's, it's not a shield. Isn't it clever how they've used the word ah. defense? Yeah. The defense, yeah, defense industry. Defense drones. Yeah, it really means yeah. weapons. <laughs> Blue Force Technologies, which is killer AI drones. Oh, some more killing. But, okay. Yeah, which was acquired by Anduril which was another one of their big investments. Anduril, if you don't know that term, no, Anduril, it's from the Lord of the Rings, uh-huh. and it's one of the Peter Thiele 
like um, Palantir. That's a uh, Lord of the Rings term. Like, wow. but Matt, does it Peter kill? Teal do they kill man people? Boying though? everywhere. Um, yeah, obviously it kills people. Okay. They are AI drones and border <gasps> monitoring. Border so, monitoring is code for a weapon ooh. to shoot things that try to cross borders, right? The founder. Oh. Well, these are like like things that sit on the top of a tower and then alert everyone to go alert kill people someone with guns. crossing a border. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Anduril was founded by Palmer Lucky. Now, I don't know if you remember Palmer Lucky. No. He was the founder of the Oculus Rift, the okay. headset that got bought by Zuckerberg. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, Palmer once built a VR headset that actually killed the wearer if they died in the video what? game. Wait, As what? In he built in he built in small explosive charges into it. Um, well, what are they you never about? obviously You're this wasn't lying. about this no this wasn't about like a commercial thing. A dumb but idea. he said he was really fascinated by the idea of the virtual world and how that's it, what he was fascinated you by feel like the reality of the virtual r- world. So, um, so he took he your actually, he took your game your game controller rumbling and like shaking and and, and took it all and the way to it killing into explosive you. Explosive charges, yes. Oh, what a um, horrible. And uh, Palmer Lucky was excommunicated um, from uh, uh, Oculus Rift and Meta when he funded Donald Trump after Donald Trump said, like, you know, horrible things about closing the border. Um, He funded, like, a billboard that said, send Hillary to jail Mm -hmm. and and was, like, one of those guys. And then he got excommunicated. He's been effectively martyred by the right for it. Like, you know, this is why they, they discriminate against us. Shockingly, Matt, also, he, shockingly, Matt, he's another tech bro college dropout. Uh, sh- I'm, yeah. yeah. Oh, I wow. can't even contain my shock. <laughs> yeah. um, open AI and I said Adam Newman. Those are um, those are the investments. So Mark okay. Andrews oh. telling us what our future yeah, should look tough, like. Jesse, and it looks like it? unmanned so defense tough. drones that shoot you and VR goggles okay, that move, blow up Come on, on move face. on quickly. You're killing us already. Mar- number so, but, two. Number two, yeah. Altman, Zuck, and Musk, the oh. AI fist bro- tech bros. There they are. The yeah. three tech oh. brothers. The trifecta. Um, I mean, Zuckerberg, these were the headlines that um, we pulled. Zuckerberg says people spend 24% more time on Instagram after Meta launched AI-powered reels. Oh, I know wow. that for a fact. Yeah, I see that in action in my house, unfortunately. Wow. Um, uh, open AI has quietly changed its core values. In fact, yep. this happened before the whole open AI drama. We covered this. Right. It wasn't covered really anywhere else. It was co- right. We saw it in a, some one article on it, and we talked about it here. They changed their core values. Which we made fun of. Which we made fun mm-hmm. of. And then they fired the CEO for changing the values of open AI. Yeah. And now the for basically for basically disobeying the mission of the company, the, the correct. Right. Yeah. Um, here's the foreshadowing. Though. Here's one that Jesse missed about AI. AI chatbot will replace human helpline workers at national eating disorder oh, association. Right. Right. I forgot about that. And that, that AI bot was working with people and telling them that yeah, they needed to, to go on a diet. Go on a diet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, it, it suggested that they could go on a diet. Um, and Twitter running ads for Disney, Microsoft, and the NBA next to neo-Nazi propaganda. Effectively, these three dudes are all of our attention. Mm. And our attention is increasingly... Uh, about a- being driven by what AI thinks, well, and AI is a racist tellhole. I will say congratulations to Mark Zuckerberg. He remained pretty quiet this year. Sam Altman and Elon Musk basically stole every headline, fight. except for the. Well, there was but the, the cage, cage fight, fight was Elon Musk's fault. That, that, that was, was Musk. Trying yeah, that was yeah, all but Musk. He wasn't backing down with True. his new cage fight bod. Well, because he was because he was legitimately <laughs> training on his own. I mean, I I, I think that. Musk brought him into that stupid conversation, but but the Mark wow, Zuckerberg. That's yeah, okay. All right, moving on. Matt. <laughs> well, well it, he was quiet up until the point when the the there was a report about um, how they knew that teens and underage yeah. kids were using I'm Instagram just, to fight the, the fact that they said they weren't. I'm just saying he's done some good hiding this year. Yeah. Um, what else so you got? Kudos to Mark. Probably in Hawaii. <laughs> number um, three, a number third number three, asshole group. Yeah. <laughs> ISS Glass Lewis in the investor industrial complex. These are the people. These are the reason why we have a ninety six average, ninety six percent average vote for directors at public boards, mm-hmm. despite Norfolk Southern, 
their board of directors okaying basically every safety shortcut. Their head of the safety committee added safety as a skill in their skills matrix the year before mm -hmm. he became the head of the safety committee. Right. Prior to that, he had no skill in it. Um, State Street adding an option and pass through voting that just fully backs corporate boards. Right. Yeah, that's bananas. Tesla's board of directors has done zero Nothing. things uh, about uh, Musk and investors all say vote for them. Right. Uh, and then we were, you were just you just sent a story around this morning about the Southwest last year Southwest board of directors were involved in the biggest meltdown in the 2022 the air, Christmas airline industry. Yep. That, mm -hmm. um their annual meeting was held in May of this year, and approximately zero directors lost a vote even after that happened. So yep. there is zero accountability if you're a director. It is the best job you can possibly have. Become the director of a company, people. That's Nothing what you should happens do. to you. Nothing will happen to you, no matter how bad well, your company is. Well, I think that 0.2% of the universe that does get removed would would quibble with you, Matt. Yeah, they would be really upset <laughs> that I just said that. And number four, the anti-woke. Oh. You're going to have to choose because we had Anheuser-Busch this year. We had the Bud Light debacle. We had Kid Rock. We had Musk saying cisgender and cis are slurs oh on God. Twitter. Oh, um, we had the Republican attorney generals warning uh, U.S. companies about discriminating against white people by having DEI. Um, initiatives. We have Ed Blum, the conservative activist who killed affirmative act action. He sued a black-run venture capital fund mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. almost like like we're talking about no real assets under management, a small fund, and all they did was work with black women founders. That was their target focus. He sued them, saying yeah. that they are were effectively contravening discrimination laws. Um, and uh, Adidas' the CEO saying Kanye West didn't really mean those anti-Semitic wow. remarks and isn't a bad person. Yeah, so, and let's not forget that this was, the year started with the Supreme Court rolling back uh, uh, rules on colleges, uh, affirmative action right. rules right. at colleges. That and was then, Ed And then Blum. the anti-DEI movement jumped onto that. I will say that we covered a headline in the summer uh, that might have actually kind of slowed down the anti-woke movement, and that was... This one, after Chick-fil-A ruffles far right feathers, Fox News asks if the culture war has gone too far. So remember well, there was one that? Of the, one of the things we did cover as a joke mm -hmm. multiple times over the course of the year was when the, the sort of far right anti-woke movement got angry at something that happened like Nine five years, years ago. ago. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like yeah. The, we, they just noticed that Chick-fil-A had a chief DEI officer that they hired in 2019. Yeah. They, uh, they were upset about all, they, we, they, they're upset about all sorts well, of stuff that they just realized How could existed. you do this eight years ago? <laughs> and then you combine, like the, they you combine that with the fact that Ron DeSantis could not define what woke is. And then, and then finally the year ending with Kid Rock basically saying, whoops, I didn't, Realize that people would lose their jobs because we're crying over uh, Bud Light here. So and and actually, you can see the sort of uh, boredom with this narrative with Vivek Vivek, who's on this Who? show this Who? year. Vivek Ramaswamy, the Ramaswamy tsunami. Who? <laughs> oh no! That happened Ew. early this year. He, he was right. He launches his presidential um, uh, campaign on our show, oh. and by on our show, I mean <laughs> soon after he was on our show. Yeah. Um, and and he launched it on the the anti woke. In fact, that he was one of my on, on that, that was one of my predictions that came true. I think I predicted that he would run for president. You, no, you predicted, I predicted everything. everything. Yeah. All right. So um, to wrap up. And I'll uh, ask you all to vote on Assholius of the Year, Mark Andreessen and the Techno Optimists. It's hard. Uh, Sam Altman, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, all the AI tech bros, uh, ISS, Glass Lewis, the Investor Industrial Complex, and finally the anti woke, anti ESG gang, uh, all hating on women, gays, and Jews. Hating everything. I mean, this is, you can't go wrong with any of these choices, let's be fair. <laughs> right. I'll go first. Go ahead, Ari. <laughs> Well, you know, Mark Andreessen and the Tech Bros, I feel like that is just one, and they are definitely ruining our lives. Mm -hmm. But you know who can do something about it? Who? And doesn't do anything? Who? All the investors, man. Oh, look ah. at you. So that's my vote. I was not expecting that. 
Ari, so Ari voting for our investors doing nothing. Jesse, you have a vote here? Anti woke hating women, gays and Jews. I mean Jeez, it's Matt, this hard. is this is tough, Matt. I, I might have to just create a tie for you because it's hard to say that this is not the year of the anti woke, right? I mean the the anti woke ESG. It feel, didn't it feel like that last year, though? I, no, I thought in earnest. I felt like that last year. I thought year. in earnest it happened this year, right? Mike Pence put out a bunch of ads talking about anti ESG. Was this not the first year that, that anti year, ESG yeah. became a thing? And the, the congressional I mean, hearings. It started at the end of last year, but we did have the ESG hearings in July, mm-hmm. which amounted to. <laughs> That Basically, uh, a whole lot of nothing. Burger. Anti yeah. like, anti BlackRock was this year, right? Anti Larry Fink all happened it was this a year. Big move this year, but towards the end of last year, I mean, it was all building the signs on, were there last year because you predicted that's what's going to happen this year. I mean, remember, DeSantis hadn't announced that he was running for president until like May, mm-hmm. like April, May, or June, or something like that. So he was busy legislating this stuff at the end of last year and into the beginning Here's of this a, year. Here's so, what I'm yeah. gonna do, Matt. I'm gonna I'm gonna combine the first two. I'm gonna combine. Uh, I'm gonna call them the tech, the tech bro enablers, along with the AI tech bros. So I'm gonna put all that in one category. I'm gonna vote for that. So you can break the tie between the, it's a- the investors. Okay, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look. The fact is, if when. When ESG sort of started as a mm-hmm. data set, as a concept, when social responsibility happened in investments at all, they all pointed at the investors and said, those are the levers. Those are the people with all the money who are basically the owners of these companies. They have the power to make change if they want to make change. And if we show them the data, they might do something different. That was like the whole premise. Mm-hmm. And it kind of worked in some ways. And it also has proven to be investors don't care about anything at all except what the stock price was yesterday. I don't care if every investor and this like hurts to say cuz we free flow analytics has a data set around like we're trying to sell to investors. Mm-hmm. But if every investor looked at the companies and said are they objectively doing well? Are the people good at their jobs? Right. Are we are we holding people accountable? The answer would uniformly be no. When 0.2% of directors in the entire world get voted out, uh, I'll 0.2%. You, and I'll tell you one pattern. They just find the best people. <laughs> I'll they tell find you, anybody. I'll tell you a couple of patterns that are emerging that we're seeing on our new show, The Proxy Countdown. One is that uh, you will see investors getting mad at pay pol- policies, right? Sometimes they'll get mad to the tune of 70% of shareholders will vote against pay, which is pretty remarkable. But... but that does not translate over to directors. They don't blame the directors. Right. They don't blame the compensation committee right. for that. They think these pay policies just exist. Uh, they come out of nowhere, right? They drop from a right. stork. The other thing we see is that we do see uh, investors getting angry about share price, right? They don't like it when the share price goes down, but they, but again, they refuse to hold the board accountable for that. They, they never do. It's yes. never the people's fault. It's not, it, it, there's always an excuse why it's not the people. And frankly, it's the fact that the investors have relationships with these boards, as in they talk to them, they know their names, they know who they are, is almost problematic because there's a social stigma against accountability. And that's not what investing is supposed to be. Everywhere else in investing, they say, show me the the data show me like we're objective about our decisions we are making we're making you know a f- efficient market hypothesis and we're making decisions based on like all of this information that we have we're not emotional about our stock and yet the people that they hire they actually have to hire to run these companies they are totally emotional about and worried about the social stigma it's it's bullshit well, and they, that's it's got to end. I will say to their credit, they're very good on LinkedIn at talking about uh, solving world issues. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. They just don't. They just don't want to hold companies accountable for anything they, they do. Uh, okay, moving on to goodliest of the year Time with for the me. the great Ari, the data queen. Is that who you are? Yeah, yeah. the data queen. Come on, Ari. That is me. Just let the music get like get you that pumped is again. Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I got to stop right. the music. That was definitely. <laughs> We're going to start out with one of my favorite categories that just kept on giving mm-hmm, all year mm-hmm, long. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I think it started last year, but I may be wrong. I don't know. 
I called it Year of the Workers' Rights finally, Part 2. Finally, all right. Wait, why is it Part 2? Because I think Part 1 was last year. Oh, forget but I about last wrong. year. Let's talk about 2023. Come on. <laughs> 2023, fine. Part 1. Um, UAW goes on strike against GM, Ford, and Stellantis. And I want to wins. remind everyone. And wins. And wins. I want to remind everyone that this is remarkable because it was the first time they had done it in this manner. Like, gone against all three at different plants and you don't know who's next. It was cool. It was incredible. Not only um, that, but but it was like it was staggered throughout, right? Like right. Y- you didn't know when suddenly it was like a plant when it in was gonna, Texas. It was, gonna hit it was next. incredible. Yeah, genius. I know. So great. The strategy behind it, loved it. Um other workers that went on strike, WGA, mm-hmm. uh they got Writers a new Guild deal. Of, that, yep. I think Hollywood, yep. yep. Yep, Hollywood writers and then the Hollywood actors also went on strike. And the directors. The U- U.S. healthcare workers walked off the job. There were 27 strikes in 2023 by healthcare workers. Okay. Um, one of them being the largest healthcare worker strike involving 70,000 workers. So that that's right. a lot. Uh, UPS workers approved massive new labor Incredible deal. new deal. Incredible. Oh. Uh, right? The salary's up to 120,000, right? For UPS delivery drivers. So, you know, we keep buying crap. We should pay them accordingly. Yes. Um even though this did not happen in the U.S., Tesla and the Nordic Solidarity, which we talked about last week a little bit, Danish Union joined in on the strike. Uh, Norway Union also joined in, yeah. and they were supported by even you know post office workers oh among <laughs> as a solidarity strike yes. in Sweden, which well, is great. And Ari, we know already that the UAW is going to go after Tesla here in America. Yes. Yeah. Exactly, with their awesome strategy mm-hmm. person. Who? What's the guy? Of Sean, the, Sean Fain. Fain. Sean. Yeah. Sean Fain. Our new, our my new idol, I guess. Yeah. Um, and labor, the labor board ruled that companies can't enforce silence for severance pay. So I don't know. There's just a lot of really good okay. stuff going so on around. Okay. So first, labor. yeah, year of the workers, right? Yep. What else? David versus Oily Goliath. Okay. I what know we have that? a lot of <laughs> we have a lot of uh, annoying headlines about oil companies, but okay. these are the ones that I liked for the future. Mm-hmm. Only fans billboards in London replaced with oily fans <laughs> raising awareness of BP CEO's <laughs> pay double A. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this is the whole category for you. It's basically you love it's that just, billboard so much. Yeah. I, I know. I know. That's, exactly. a, that's a lame joke. Oily fans. <laughs> I thought it's clever. <laughs> that is great. New California laws mandate climate disclosures for both private and public companies. That's right. That's a big deal. The maybe next president, Gavin Newsom. There's still still rumors that Biden will step down and Gavin Newsom will run. Who knows? Youth environmentalists bring Montana climate case to trial yes. after 12 yeah, years. That's awesome. One of the Seeking biggest stories of the year precedent. by far. Mm-hmm. CalSTRS escalates efforts to hold global company, companies accountable for not adequately disclosing climate change risks. Um, and they, they actually voted against 2,000 boards of directors. The entire boards? The entire yes. boards? Okay. So, Matt, there's an investor um, that did something. Well, it's, it's basically California against everybody. Okay. Well, California and Montana. That's true. <laughs> well, the, no, all the uh, kids in Montana. Yeah. The kids. Right, right, right. Those kids may not grow up to be adults that actually can do something. But what else? Number Sorry. three. Number three. Absurdity. Ooh. I just loved some really <laughs> absurd headlines this year. What, give really us good. some examples. <laughs> we started out with sushi terrorism. <laughs> it's okay. spreading as pranksters lick food in utensils in Japan's conveyor belt restaurant. Why do you Guess love that so Did much, you Ari? eat when I was in Japan? <laughs> no conveyor belts. I was gonna just Ari, why do you like on. that? Why is that so important to you? Because it's just, look at these people. You They're like, around licking stuff. You Come like on. the idea of people licking <laughs> food in restaurants? This this tickles it's you? So, it's so absurd to me that okay. people are just licking stuff. Just sounds gross. Just sounds gross. When you see like a plate of something going by. You and just want to like, lick it. Yeah. <laughs> like, imagine <laughs> just that. Just want to lick stick. it. I don't understand Weird. why you like that one. What else you got? Disney blocks Ron DeSantis' Florida power play with a royal family. Yes! This is one of my favorite yeah. stories yeah. of the year. Yeah. So random. Yeah. So genius. We love it. We love it. Um, and then the way this headline read, this airline wants you to travel across the world without clothes. Yeah. Wait, what was that one again? 
That was naked traveling. That was the one where they they told you to wear whatever you were wearing, but not pack anything. And, yep. and, then, they were, and then what? They you would could, set you up with clothes at your destination. Yep. Yeah. Rental yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I'm down you for that. Rent, I'm with that one. You can rent clothing. I like that one. Um, this is an a creative effort, I might say, of um, saving, you know, CO two, saving fuel because it's a lighter load, <laughs> and. AI Jesus shows a yeah. fascinating refashioning of the biblical Boo. prophet for the modern era. I don't like that one. Oh, please. AI Jesus weighed in heavy this morning. Matt spent so much time with AI Jesus. I asked him questions about why so few board of directors were voted out, and um, AI um, Jesus had an answer about Corinthians. Yeah, it was great. All right, well. it, it sent us a Bible verse. Um, then the first instance that I noticed of the glass defense. The glass yeah, defense. This is your term. Okay, this is your yep. next category, the glass defense. What is that? Yes, Nicola founder Trevor Milton may be a convicted fraudster, but he wasn't greedy or mean-spirited and not as bad as Elizabeth Holmes. Right, wow. right. Uh, well, this his is lawyers like, say. Yeah, this is kind of like Mark Zuckerberg's great China defense, right? He's always like, well, you know, it, you can control me, but you really should be worried about China. <laughs> no, I like, though, that, like, Trevor Milton looked for the, like, how many female founders are there in all of, co like, companies that are, mm -hmm. that are big enough, much less how many commit fraud. Trevor Milton just pointed to the one. <laughs> mean and, and was like, spirited. She was shrill. She's mean. She was a shrill and jerk. She's and greedy. Yeah. She's greedy. And let's not forget that the true story at that company, Matt, to echo some of your complaints earlier, was that the investors and board did absolutely nothing. Zero things. They, yeah. and, they, and they all pretty much knew that it was a train wreck and a disaster. They did nothing to control her. Uh, and last but not least, least, a little bit of justice. Okay. What kind of justice? FTX yeah, we'll be the founder, as Sam Bankman Freed, is found guilty of all right, charges, right. Yes. including Has fraud. Hasn't been sentenced yet, right? He has not been sentenced yet? Has no. not been Why does it take so yet? long? Just sentence him. Know. Who cares? Yep. What else? Tucker Carlson ousted at Fox News following network's oh, yeah. seven hundred and eighty-seven million dollar settlement. I was that happy was about that. Almost a billion dollars. I think that precipitated Rupert stepping down. Um, Keith, maybe he's also one hundred and forty-five years old, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, <laughs> has like, not died yet. Tucker, Tucker gets fired. They, they get sued. They lose. They they settle. Tucker, they fire Tucker, and then he um, divorces his twelfth wife, doesn't he? That's like, right. Or no, he, he 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 has a young he wife. Didn't marry he didn't her marry her because he found her to be too biblical. I think. I th and uh, and and now he's stepped down from you know other than owning the class B shares mm -hmm. he stepped down and he launched his own thing on like Twitter or whatever but Tucker, yeah, Tucker we haven't no, we haven't heard no he's anything, just you no know, really. his he new just company started just started, started last streaming. week yeah last Ugh, week Lord. yeah but he was doing it on Twitter for a while and no one cared and yeah, uh, but then he couldn't because he's still you know he was still being paid by Fox. Well, he's going to get sued by Fox if they want to. So it's All a right. mess for him. So the goodlies so of the year to wrap up. Uh, Ari picked Year of the Workers, David versus Oily Goliath, Absurdity, <laughs> The Glass Defense, and Justice. Anybody? Justice. justice. I could go first. Go ahead, our uh, Jesse. Jesse the Money Whisperer. Year of the Workers, Riot. Seems like oh, a I good loved, choice. I there. loved those headlines. That Matt. was fun for a while, yeah. for many weeks. It kept on giving. I'm going to throw you for a loop here. Yep. Um, I cannot get a, the goodliest of the millennia uh -huh. might be Sushi Disney too. blocks Ron DeSantis oh. yeah. power play with the royal, the royal family the royal clause family. is just so great. It's Very just creative. so absurdly great yep. that I, um, remind I'm people what that. that was exactly. So they basically say in the contract, um, it's effectively using the life of a British royal as mm -hmm. a time period in a contract. So right. Disney said they would have full, you know, rights and jurisdiction over, you know, these operations until the death of King Charles's like third grandson Last living <laughs> plus, descendant. Plus, plus one day. Right? Yeah. Like it was like something like that. It's such an absurd thing to write in there. Uh. And I feel like it's just a troll. And, and they I love snuck it. it in there, right? They did no. They they did all the things they were supposed to do. It's just that no one was paying right. attention. Right. So they like woke up and realized that this this little 
party that Ron DeSantis put together to control Disney had no power over Disney at the end. They had like limited powers. And then they went and sued them. It uh, was great. It just made my day, made my, my year. Uh, I will, uh, this one seems easy, Ari. I mean, based on your enthusiasm throughout the year I, I, I mean, and your enthusiasm today and just listing it first, I think the year of the workers' rights is really the win here. <laughs> And no surprise we're going to vote for that. So that's the goodliest of the year, year of workers' rights, including uh, big wins at the United Auto Workers uh, Union there and uh, UPS workers. They didn't even go on strike at UPS, right? They just, they threatened. They, they threatened. threatened, but they, but honestly, they, they got air conditioners. That's yeah. all it oh, is. Oh, right. So I that's the goodliest of the win. year. This brings Which us means... to the story of the year. Oh, God. Oh, I don't know how we're going to do this. we've been waiting for this. That's me. I'm a little, I'm a little. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have you vote between what we've already picked. That would be profits over planet. Uh, the assholiest would be uh, investors that don't do anything. The goodliest would be the, the year of the workers' rights. I'm going to remind you. I'm going to also list. Here's some headlines I think that maybe we left out that we didn't talk about. No one mentioned uh, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, SVB. I mean, that was like tech bro instigated okay. run, bank, bank run. Still no one uh, mentioned and that investors, one. And another thing, that's investors who did nothing. Because that's, like that's the true. board, th there was a true. fucking winery executive on the risk committee of the board. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, it showed, doing? and it showed another parties. another harm of social media, right? Because that was a basically mm. orchestrated by panic on social media, right? On Twitter. Yeah, yeah on Twitter. Um, um, it, on like Twitter? A, it was like a WhatsApp chain against, again, with Silicon Valley tech bros and Twitter uh, people all lamenting. And the investors who did nothing for years. I don't know. That one was dumb. Um, uh, no one mentioned uh, the fact that the Target CEO, uh, Brian Cornell, is that his name? Brian Cornell? I should know this. Uh, uh, sure. He announced that DEI has fueled much of our growth over the last nine years. I like that one. Uh, there was a, a grocery chain in Europe, Carrefour, that put shrinkflation price warnings on food to shame uh, the brands that were ripping off we customers. That. I like that yeah, one. We did like that. No one mentioned that the fact that the COP28 was run by an oil CEO. It was. Yeah, it was that. Uh, yeah. This oh. one, Matt, that I'm, I wish that you had covered. Uh, you left this one out. Former BlackRock executive Tariq Fancy said many ESG experts are underqualified. <laughs> yeah, it says a guy who had zero qualifications <laughs> to be an ESG expert. Uh, I like your shirt today, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> I love the ironic. I love this one. Expert. I love that Comcast actually complained to the FCC that listing all of its monthly oh, fees yeah. was too hard. That's <laughs> pathetic. And and finally, we left out the ultimate glass cliff hire that we've ever heard of, and that's the CE oh. CEO Linda, Linda Yaccarino over there at Twitter. God. Uh, and know. then what a train wreck. And then finally, I'll add one more for your consideration, uh, and that is our platform launch, which happened it in June. Yes. Yeah. And this is why I'm including this one because I'm going to I'm going to call the subheading here know the people who run your companies and here's a yeah. here's some headlines that back this up that I like the most. Um well first of all, Charlie Munger died a couple, a, like a few months Aww, ago, right? That's oh. one of our <laughs> oldest ago? directors, uh know your people. Uh you covered this one Matt, but the Southwest CEO just vowed that last year's Christmas meltdown will never happen again, so you should know your board over there at Southwest CEO. The, the you covered Norfolk Southern too. How about this one? Remember Walgreens CEO Roz Brewer stepped down? Yeah. But we were yeah. the only ones to cover the fact that Roz Brewer had no power or influence over there. It was it's actually all a, Stefano Pacino. Exactly. Yeah, Stefano yeah. Pacino whose wife is actually the CEO over there at Walgreens and he controls uh, all the power over there. Um we covered these stories a lot uh, over the over the year. The all the glass cliffiness going over going on at all the major U.S. news organizations, all the cable news outlets, all the U.S. news organizations are run by women now. Mm -hmm. How about this one? Vince McMahon listed as a risk factor in an SEC filing. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, and then two one. of my favorites that we left out, uh, these are some of the all-time classics. At O'Reilly Automotive, we covered the fact that all the white directors, <laughs> that's six out of the ten directors, all the white dudes, 
at O'Reilly <laughs> Automotive were all wearing identical oh, orange no. dress shirts, right? Yeah, but not, not the women. Not the women or people of color. <laughs> yeah. And finally, my probably my favorite story of the year. so good. My favorite story of the year, and this is why you should know your people and why you should celebrate our platform launch. Verizon CEO Hans Vestberg has been tracking his mood out of one out of from one out of ten in a spreadsheet every day since two thousand nine. <laughs> <laughs> and Hans, if you're listening, we want access to that spreadsheet. We'll put it right Hans, up on our platform. Please, so please. So there's a bunch of nonsense there for all of you to consider for story we of the didn't year. We even talk about Qantas, which we covered <laughs> for like a month. I was gonna the add absurdity of Qantas. I was gonna add Qantas. So the, the story over there at Qantas is that the Qantas was just a horrible company over there. In Australia, uh, they sh they sh uh, excuse the French. They shat the bed in every direction uh, possible, Ooh. and uh, such language. The newly appointed CEO, a woman, a Glass Cliff uh, CEO, she apologized for everyone's horrible behavior. <laughs> So there, there's oh, a bunch going on here for story of the year. So I, I don't know who wants to weigh in here first. What they think is the ultimate here. So let's just summarize. Exhaustingest was profits over planet. Mm -hmm. Assholiest was ISS. Investors class, doing Lewis, nothing. Investors doing nothing. And the year of workers' rights are your three big possible stories of the year. And then any of these that Damien just said, including that we our left out, including our company, our platform launch that happened in I, June, I, gonna, I believe. Yeah. I would love to say that our company was the story of the year, but <laughs> zero. <laughs> Zero people care that our company oh. exists or it does what it does. So I, it's hard to go with that okay. one. Um, wow. Uh, I forgot about Tariq Fancy saying ESG experts were underqualified. Yeah, you spent like 30 <laughs> minutes of a show well, talking about Tariq Fancy. It drove yeah. me bananas. And Matt, yeah, this is a really, guy who's never gotten really a data got point you. in his life. And this is an important one because it, you know, it after weeks and weeks of covering anti-ESG and anti-woke, we we realized the pattern, and the pattern was is that these people were all targeting women and people of color, right? And 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 I think the subtext here is is that that the the ESG experts that he's referring to by and large are women, right? I mean, he's the sustainability industry, ESG industry. It's a lot of women. I mean, right. I, I think that's the subtext here, but maybe that's just me. I know who I'm going for, though. Yeah, go ahead, Ari. Oof. Because I want this to happen yeah. everywhere. Vince McMahon being listed as, wow, a risk factor. as the story of the year. Well, so yeah. this is, but, that but, is the <laughs> essence of what I want this right. world to become. But I'm going to take a little bit of control here. What she's voting for is us. She's voting for free float. Know the people who run your companies because that that's what this is all about, right, Ari? Yes. yes. The answer is yes. yes. So that's her and vote. no story like just makes that so clear to me as that one. Jesse. Like Tesla's war needs to do this with Elon Musk. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you we should know the name of every person on Tesla's board who hasn't voted out Musk. Absolutely. I mean, the <laughs> his brother. I mean, I, look, no, Kimble, note yeah. that I didn't even There's make Bill. Murder. I didn't make Bill Ackman asshole of the year. Although, arguably, he could have been. I just thought that was too much. Easily, bias. easily. <laughs> um, uh, Jesse, Recency who, who are you going with here? All right. We didn't even mention the wildfires in, in Maui and Hawaiian Electric. There was like so much There's shit. So that much, so much. All right. Matt, so Matt is their CEO and he goes on vacations in Hawaii. With all the other CEOs. Yeah. He's I, I, know where, fist. I, I sleep in a twin bed at my uh, my in-law's house. Like just that's like bad. Mark Zuckerberg. Like that's bad. Like Zuck does. All right. I am going to keep it exciting and vote for assholiest, ISS Glass Lewis, wow. and the Investor Industrial Complex. So again, both of you really sticking to the theme yes. of our company, right? Like yes. knowing who, really, no, seriously, knowing who the people are who, who run your companies, right? Yes. Putting the people this back into the market. This is why I show up to work every day, Damien. That's right. I mean, I... I, I um, don't make I'm me... Vote don't don't make me break any ties. I'm going to vote for the same thing. No, I'm going to vote for the same thing. It is... Um, the, He's voting for his own category. Of course he is. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course I am. You know, why would I not vote for my it's category? It's Matt Mascari. Yeah. Come on. Look, yeah, He's our analyst hole. Look, the fact is, um, like, we uh -oh. just spent, like... Three weeks, like um, facts. manically talking about open AI and and how like you know every other pundit was saying that this was a total g corporate governance fuck up and the board yep. should be fired. Mm -hmm. And prior to this, you couldn't name a single board member. Right. You couldn't. Have, you didn't know any of their names. And the only two people fired who resigned <laughs> were the women. Yeah. Right. Like the culmination of all of this shit from this year uh, was effectively that moment. It, it is. 
uh, you know, the money wins. It is we don't know who the board members are until it's too late, and when it's all said and done, blame the women, people of color, and Jews, right? Like I, I don't know. I feel like that's the and then investors do nothing about it. I think that's the winner. Well, I, I'm going to happily agree with everybody. Not that my vote matters here, but we all basically voted for the same thing, which is knowing the people who run your company. That's the story of the year, right? Because they're not being held accountable. We can help you hold them accountable. That makes me tired. But the story of the year is that investors just don't seem to care in the right direction. Is that the story of the year? It's kind of they a- don't even ask. No one asks until it's too late. But let's uh, do. We have uh, yes. very backwards. We looking. have. We're not going to nap. We're not going to do predictions this week. We're going to have our 2024 prediction show coming up right after the New Year's. But let's do a one final category for the show. That is who won the year. That's a big one. Who won the year? Yeah, I can go I first because I Fine. mine's quick. Um, and this is this is riding your coattails, Ari. My yeah. winner is actually the man that you just called your new hero, and that's Sean Fain at the United Auto Workers. Because not wow. only was it a strategic, Huge fangirl. <laughs> not only was it a strategic victory, got him on the podcast that we can all. I've actually have tried. I'm going to try again. Yeah. Not only was it a strategic victory that we can all applaud, but he did something else. One is he made labor action cool again. He made it interesting, <laughs> and th- and two should we get red hat saying it? Two he used Make labor cool. He again. used old fashioned ESG data to prove his point he highlighted ceo worker pay ratio in a way that yep. nobody has ever done successfully and before he just hounded that message yeah so i thought it was brilliant so that's my winner go ahead ari i don't know well okay i do agree with you but also sam altman man how i mean it's a good choice right it's a good he's choice got, he's got all the i don't want to call them evil of the world behind him but like mm-hmm. he does yeah he's, we didn't and ari pull. We didn't go deep into this on this show for a reason because it's t- OpenAI is technically not a, a publicly traded company. It's technically not in our He now has Microsoft as a fly on the wall right. to make sure that nobody messes with him. But as far as it's headlines true. as far as headlines go over the year there there are only two people that dominated it and it's definitely either Sam Altman or Elon Musk. They dominated business news headlines absolutely. Jesse, do you want to go next? Because mine is long and yours is very, very short. And we all know. Can I just say without looking? I think we all know what Jesse's going to pick. <laughs> yeah, there's only we, one possible. I chose it to annoy no, but everyone I think, but Ari. <laughs> it's I'm a good choice. I think it's a good it. choice too, though. I think it makes sense. Taylor Swift. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Travis she Kelsey. She won. Oh. They both did. We can no. put them both. They're the power won. couple. How did Travis win? <laughs> love won. <laughs> well, <laughs> love. <laughs> I'm actually. I, I, love win. I we don't want to make them sick. I'm really sad for Beyonce, who like also co like she like and Barbie. She sub won. I guess yeah. in Barbie too. You really sad for those but other no, but, no, highly but successful Beyonce, capitalistic wait, enterprises. Wait, Beyonce was already a billionaire. Taylor Swift this broke is, into billionaire yeah. territory. Oh, well, thank God. Um, and I think Mattel was already a billionaire too. Yeah. Uh, my winner of the year is uh, boards of directors. Why? They like won in 100%. general. <laughs> if you were on the board of a publicly traded company, you are by Cush definition life. winning. Yeah. You are winning every Free bagels, single minute of every job single security. Day. Here's some stats to all prove your that you're friends winning. To ha- all your friends to hang out with after they fly yeah, you true. into the meeting. I here's some stats. I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna the, like just say it and assert it. I'm gonna give you the stats behind it. A board seat lasts on average seven years. A cumulative board seat for a person, like a person gets an uh, on average 14 years on boards. Given the average board member starts when they're around age 60, that means you have an excellent shot of being on boards until your late 70s, right? Like if you are just slightly above average, you could be 77 years old, still on boards. The average board pays about $200,000 per year. And there's about 12 meetings. That means if you get three to four boards in the time frame you're a board member, your board time earnings come out to $6.4 million or $17,000 per meeting. Tell me that isn't winning when the average board member gets voted out 0.2% of the <laughs> yeah. time and, and Matt, 96% of investors agree they're doing the a best great job. job. And Matt, but if you're really not- lucky, you can land at like Best Buy. And I just covered Best Buy. They, uh, they had four meetings last year, just four. Oh my Four god. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did we That's just covered on the work. proxy countdown. We just 
covered Visa, whose board members make on average three hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year. Yeah. And Visa the- looks like a party. They're mm-hmm. a party over Come there. Come on, it's like, a party. This is all amazing. Right. It's a party. Meanwhile, yeah. the average American has yearly performance reviews, and 40% of Americans get laid off at least once wow. in their careers. Mm-hmm. And and they're, the average bank account, the retirement account that they have at the age that you would get a board seat is $400,000. Board members are making six point four million. Uh, what after they're done with their careers? Hey, little kid, what do you well want to do when Matt. you grow up? I want to be a board member. Tell me that those people are not I, winning, and I'll say you're lying. Well, I will say this, Matt. I think it's a great choice, but ironically, the the biggest sort of board story of the year, at least maybe there's a recency bias here, was the struggle at OpenAI board versus CEO Sam Altman, and the board came out as losers. I mean, the women no, no, on the no. board did, I should the say. Women the women came out as <laughs> losers. <laughs> Just the women. Yeah. Because women lose always. Because women but that, are big, fat losers. But that they might, get fed last. <laughs> but that might be all the proof that you need, that the, the board of directors are, it's a tenured position, you have it for life, and you're there to insulate the CEO, and that's what keeps you keeping your job for life is that you just do the bidding of the CEO, right? That's it. That's a year in review show 2023. That was it. That's Damien Hazelnut Rollis. That's Ari the Data Queen, Jesse the Money Whisperer. I am your analyst, all Matt Muscardi. We are Free Float. We will be back again. We won't be here next week. We'll do some Friday, shows. I don't think. No, We're but do we'll some do shows a few shows between next Between now and the yeah. end of the year. We've got prediction shows coming up. Also, the proxy countdown dropped this week yesterday, the second episode in which we did cover the Visa vote and Microsoft. Um, and their 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 results and all sorts of stuff from the AGMs. So go check that out. Go search for that. Until later, good bye.